Hey, what's up everyone? We're back with another tutorial in Cubase. That instrument you just saw me using was Loop Mash. And I've used Cubase for years now and I've never played around with Loop Mash, so I figured today is the day. And it's a pretty intuitive DJ type machine and I don't do a lot of DJ stuff and that may show when I do my DJ tutorials, but that's beside the point. The point is that uh, Loop Mash is there. It's ready to be used for anyone interested in using it in Cubase. And I figured as someone that does videos on the internet teaching people how to use Cubase, I should be aware of it and at least understand how it works. So I've gained a functional knowledge and now I'm going to share what I've learned with you all. So jumping into Cubase, let's take a look at it. Uh, as you can see, I had it all pulled up right here. Don't stop the mash 89. There are three screens in loop mash. There's the slice selection and that's the number of voices that play at a time. And there's some other stuff, which is not all that important. Audio parameters, and this can help you make your loop sound good together. And then finally, there's the performance controls, which is the important thing. That's where you get to do all this fun stuff. See, that stuff is fun and uh, it's easy to do. And a lot of times the, the problem I have with DJ stuff, and I think a lot of people have this issue, is that in a matter of seconds, you can be making music that would take you years, you know, to learn to play the guitar like that. or And people feel like it's a cheating, it's a shortcut, but it's not. It's just the way that things are going. I mean, we don't use a horse and buggy to plow our fields anymore. We use a tractor. So it's good to learn this stuff, to learn what you can do with it, and then to learn how to use it strategically in your own compositions and your own music. And so let's get into the first tab here, which is slice selection. So the way that loop mash typically works is that it loads up these loops and then this slider right here determines how much of the uh, track you're using. Uh, so we can listen to it. You have to turn off sync to allow it to play without using the sequencer. So. so this is the master track. We can make the drum beat the master track, but we'll have to pull this up. So. And on this side, we have two parameters. The first is uh, pitch transposing to make all the pitches of your loops be the same. And the other one is a volume knob. So you can actually mix uh, volume. In loop mash. Now in the uh, audio parameters, you can add staccato or wet dry mix. So And the two parameters we're looking at most are slice time stretch, the staccato amount, the wet dry mix, and the amount of quantize. Uh, those will have a bearing on how the loop sound as you heard. Uh, the adaption, so the loops adapt to each other algorithmically somehow within the software, but you can choose how they adapt. And here in slice mode, each of these is a different scene. 
So I was playing that on the computer keyboard as we see. And you can store 24 scenes in Loop Mash, so that's pretty awesome. So we've seen the performance controls, we've seen the slice selection. Now let's take a look if we wanted to build our own preset. We'll just go here and we'll choose empty. That's probably the easiest way to get there, right? Empty. And what I've done here is I've made a loop with loops that I've taken from the media bay and it's uh, I didn't pitch him or anything. I just uh, time sequenced them to be even. So if we had an empty preset, we could just take stuff. You could take it directly from the media bay or from your project window and just add each one. And I think there's one more. Yeah, the roads. So we can start building out our own uh, instrument here. So we are keying off the drum track. and we start to get a little bit of a Super Mario level two sound. So the key to this is just sort of playing around. You can choose which one you want to be the dominant track. Then when you have something you like, you can save it as a scene by hitting this button here and clicking which pad you like. And so that's our first scene. Now let's build another scene. We'll make this the key. We'll pull this up. We'll pull this back. We'll pull this up. We'll pull this back. And... and we'll make that a scene here. And then we'll have the drum beat with no bass and just the roads. And we'll see how that sounds. And we'll make that the... So as you can see, you can start building scenes and then you can play them. And you could use Loop Mash as a compositional tool. You could use it as a live tool. And once you get the... Uh, the stuff flowing, you can start using the performance controls. And that is generally in a nutshell how Loop Mash works. I hope you found this useful. Uh, if you have, feel free to like or subscribe and everybody have a great day. Bye.